Mic check, one, two, one, two. What's good, YouTube? It's your boy Tank B Chopping, and I'm back with another haircut tutorial. Alright guys, so jumping straight into this haircut, as you can see what I'm doing here is I'm just combing out my client's hair, making sure it's laying down the proper way. As you can see, it's got, you know, it's got some hair going a bunch of different ways, so I want to make sure I comb that down before I actually start. Uh, now I have my number four guard on my clipper, and what we're going to be doing on this cut is a number four on top. We're actually going to be going over the sides with a number three, and then we're going to be doing a mid taper, line up the beard, add some enhancements, you know, really try to make this haircut pop. And as you can see, I'm going over the top, you know, a good amount of times going against the grain, across the grain, just trying to get it all down to that desired length, trying to make sure we get all this hair from sticking up and everything. So what I'm doing here is I'm actually using a technique to comb the hair back. That way any hair that is laying down that's longer, it gets it standing straight up and I can actually cut that down with that number four guard. So now I got my number three on my clippers. I got my lever all the way open and I'm coming right up to that parietal ridge area, debulking the sides with that three and a half. And then I'm gonna come right below this with my number three lever closed, which makes it a true number three guard. And once again, guys, you wanna make sure you're using a comb or a brush. That way you, you know, you uh, can get rid of all that excess debris, you know, and you can also brush or comb the hair down the way it lays. That way you can actually see what the hair is doing. Alright, so now I'm going in with my Babyliss Custom FX Trimmers and I'm setting in my first initial guideline and as you can see, I'm setting it in in a rainbow like shape and the reason for that is that's the shape that I want to keep on this blend. I want to keep the C cup slightly dark, you know what I'm saying? So uh, since I already have the trimmers in my hand, I'm going to go ahead and line up his beard and the only reason why I'm doing that now guys is once again is because I have the trimmers in my hand and he comes weekly. So since he comes weekly, I want to make sure that I keep that edge up in the same spot and I don't start to push it back. Alright, now I'm going in with my research shaver and I'm just getting the, the bald all the way down the skin using a slight flick out motion that way I don't create any harsh lines. Now I'm going in with my clipper lever oven. Lever oven? What the? <laughs> lever open. And uh, these are the Starcraft Apex guys. Uh, this is my lever all the way open. I'm coming up another section still following that same shape using a slight flick out motion. And now that that guideline is put in there, I close my lever halfway, come right below that, and then I'm gonna close my lever all the way and attack that bottom line. And if that doesn't get this line completely out, that's fine. I can always come back later in in detail. Now I'm going in with my number one guard lever open. And remember guys, I'm trying to keep that same shape. So I'm creating another panel of hair or another section of hair or panel section, whatever you want to say. But I'm creating another another section uh, using a slight flick out motion. That way it makes it easier for this line to come out. And then I'm closing my lever little by little and working my way down towards that previous guideline. Right, now what I'm doing here is this is my number three guard again and I'm just debulking that a little more just wanted to make sure I was getting it to that length this is my number two guard lever open basically doing some down fading and then I'm going to close my lever come right below that and there is still going to be some discrepancies in the cut I'm going to have to go in with my 1.5 guard and really clean that up And people always ask me why I changed my system. My system is technically the same. I just switched some of my steps up here and there. But my system pretty much stays the same, guys. So now I'm going in on my 1.5 guard. And as you can see, I'm using corner blending. Uh, you can't really tell in certain areas. Like right here, it looks like I'm using the whole blade. But I'm actually using just, you know, half of the teeth on there. I uh, started off with my lever open, flicking at that section. And then I closed my lever, did the same thing. And as you can see, there's still some discrepancy. So what I'm doing here is I'm going back to that number one guard. Started off with my lever open. Tried cleaning up these lines and these dark areas that I see. And then I'm going to uh, adjust my lever as needed. 
And then this is where you set yourself apart, guys. This is where you have to use that barber's eye and really start, you know, getting a little uh, detailed with it, trying to be a little more precise. So here is my zero guard. And as you can see, it's cleaning up that bottom section a lot. And once again, guys, I'm just adjusting my lever as needed, going in with my uh, with no guard on there, lever open, using corner blending, adjusting my lever as needed, guys. And now I'm going back in with my number. Uh, this is actually my two lever open. And now I'm just going to clean up that lineup, you know, just a little more before I move on. And as you can see, the blend, it already looks pretty good. Like there is still a little bit of, uh, you know, a little bit of dark areas and discrepancies I need to touch on. But it's nothing too major. Like this haircut can pass. Well, this side of the haircut can pass for a good haircut. And then the reason why I'm just going over the edge up one more time is I want to make sure everything is nice and on point. You know what I'm saying? Like a lot of people just go over the edge up one time. Sometimes you're going to have to go over it a couple times to make sure it's on point. You know what I'm saying? Making sure it looks good. Uh, so what we're doing with the beard here is I'm actually trimming it down with the number four guard. So I'm, I got my number four on my clipper, getting all that down to that desired length. And then we're going to fade the beard in. So I started off with my clipper, no guard, lever open. And then I'm just fading in that section by closing my lever closing my lever i said lever twice we i said lever weird twice already but i started closing my lever uh moving up and now i'm going in with my zero guard lever open and then i adjusted it closed as needed and as you can see it's pretty much blended uh now i'm lining up my client's mustache uh lining up the in, the inner part of his goatee you know just trying to set that up to look good And this is all based on your client's preference. You know what I'm saying? Like people always ask me, how do I line up goatees and mustaches? You got to really consult with your client and see what they want, see what they have, see what they can get. You know what I'm saying? Because some people want stuff they can't get and you got to be able to explain to them like, hey, like you can't get that. You know what I'm saying? And it is what it is. Just explain to them, tell them what you can do. And uh, yeah, man, that's basically it. So now I'm going in with my FX3 trimmers. And what I'm doing here is I'm lining up my client behind the ear. And as y'all can see, guys, these lines, and now that the fade was, be uh, the beard was faded in, I don't know why I'm talking so messed up right now, but now that the fade was bearded in, that other side came together a lot better. Now we're moving on to the right side, and as you can see, I did speed up this part of the video a little bit. I don't feel that y'all really want to uh, see everything so slow again. Not slow, but you know, in real time. Uh, but if you do, you can rewind this video and you can check it out one more time. But we're going to be doing the same exact thing on this side, setting my bald guideline, went ahead and lined up my client in the front and his beard. Just because he comes every week and we want to make sure we don't push them lines too far back or change the line up. So that's the reason why I'm doing my lineup now instead of at the end of this part of the fade. Lining up his mustache, you know, making him look good before we actually start the fade work on this side of the haircut. Alright, so now I'm going there with my apex lever open. I'm going to be repeating. I'm going to be repeating the same steps. Uh, started off with my lever open, adjusting my lever, closed little by little, worked my way down. One guard lever open, setting in my next guideline. Uh, closed my lever little by little, working my way down. And then this time I'm using my zero guard to clean up that bottom line first. 1.5 guard here so as you can see i am attacking this side slightly different but it's really the same thing i'm just switching up the way i do my steps so i did the 1.5 now this is my uh my two lever open and then close and now i'm just cleaning everything up one and a half guard just going back and detailing it, you know what i'm saying And remember guys, when you're detailing or, or really when you're working any part of any haircut, you want to really make sure to use your mirror, you know what I'm saying? Look at the haircut from different angles, use bigger guards than you actually think you need just to be safe, you know what I'm saying? Especially if you're newer to cutting hair or you're not sure. Now, if you've been doing it for a while and you're a little more sure of, uh, a little more sure of yourself, then you ain't got to use a bigger guard. But I just like to give that advice because I feel a lot of people use the wrong guard and they take too much hair off. So if you use a bigger guard first, it's going to at least set you up in the right direction to go. Like if it don't cut any hair okay let me go one guard down with my lever open so i feel it's always a good idea to go bigger than to start off with a smaller guard and once again guys that's just my opinion that's just what i did and i feel that it can help you a lot and not taking up uh, your client's hair like not messing it up or taking too much hair off 
But anyways, guys, getting back into this cut, as you can see, this part of the haircut is coming together. I'm lining them up behind the ear. We're going to move to the back taper, and we're going to do the same thing. Uh, I do want to state that if y'all see any tools in this video, man, you know your boy's been working, so... Uh, any tools in this video that you see, you can actually use my discount code. So if you see a Gamma or a StyleCraft tool, you can go to their website. You can use my discount code Tank10. Save yourself with a little bit of money. Well, I said any tools, but then I just saw that research shaver, and I just remembered that I don't have a discount code for Andes. But any other tool besides the Andes. Basically, okay, let me just stop there. If you see any Gamma, StyleCraft, or Babyliss tools that you like, you can go to their website and use my discount code Tank10. There, I fixed it. My bad for lying and saying any tool. But nonetheless, guys, if you see any StyleCraft or uh, Gamma tool, you can go to the StyleCraft website, the Gamma Plus website. Use my discount code Tank10. Save yourself a little bit of money. Or if you like those custom effects that you see me use earlier in the video, you can download the custom effects app. You can make your own trimmers or clippers. Use my discount code Tank10. Or if you like that uh, FX3 trimmer you saw me using, you can actually go to their website, babylesspro.com. Use my discount code Tank10. Save yourself a little bit of money. But you ain't got to. You know what I'm saying? You can get it from your local uh, your, your local uh, resellers. Or not resellers. I don't know why. I'm thinking of shoes right now. You can get it from your local distributors. You know what I'm saying? They're going to have some of these tools in stock. So you can get it from them. You don't have to go to the website. But I'm just saying that's an option you can do. And I know I feel like I'm rambling on a little bit right now. But it's all good. Alright guys, so as you can see, this back taper is coming together. He does have some dark areas, but that's just due to the density in his hair. So we're not really going to, you know, worry too much about it. We are going to try to clean it up once I'm done with the razor. Uh, I don't think I recorded it. But nonetheless, guys, we're going in with the razor. And as you can see, we're just making sure that these lines really, really pop. So you want to make sure that you're stretching that skin. That way you don't, uh, you don't nick your client. And once again, guys, we're doing the hot towel on my client. You know, most of my clients, when they get a beard, I put that hot towel on them because it just makes it easier to shave. The clients find it really relaxing. You know what I'm saying? Especially when it's colder out, I feel that it just makes them feel a little better. You know what I'm saying? So in my opinion, this haircut already looks like really, really good. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to say flawless because I'm not a perfect barber, not the best barber. But in my opinion, this haircut looks really, really good as is. But once I add them enhancements, guys, it's really going to take this haircut to the next level. And that's what I like to do. Like, you got to give your clients a good haircut before you add enhancements. Don't just add enhancements to cover up flaws or mess ups. Give them the best haircut you can give them before adding enhancements. That's what, That way, when they look at it, they're like, man, this is a good cut. But then when you add them enhancements, they're like, oh, this cut, yeah, this is worth whatever you're charging. You know what I'm saying? I just feel that that's a little gem, a little nugget that you can use to either raise your uh, raise your prices or to have uh, clients just pay you more all right guys so now that i'm done with that razor work i'm moving on to these enhancements i'm using no drip from 245 uh, I am using this different airbrush gun. I, I got it from Amazon. The link is in my description if you're interested. And once again, guys, I'm not trying to put too much uh, paint on my client to where it looks fake. I just want to put enough to where everything looks sharper, but it still looks natural. You know what I'm saying? So we're not oversaturating the client with this dye. But as you can see, it is adding some sharper lines, making everything look a little nicer and a little sharper. Now I'm adding some hairspray and I'm going to follow this uh, no drip with some hair fibers or yes, with some, that, it is called hair fibers. I would say hair topics, but it's topic hair fibers and I'm going in and following that uh, that no drip with this just to give a little more uh, natural look, adding some hairspray, you know what I'm saying, to really lock those fibers in. And now what I'm doing is just cleaning everything up with them trimmers, making sure everything is nice and in line. All right, guys, but check it out. This is how my client came into the shop looking. This is the before look, and this is the after. Y'all let me know what y'all think about this haircut in the comment section. If y'all like this video, please make sure to smash that like button. Also, if you're new to my channel, make sure and subscribe one time for your boy. Remember, guys, if you want a haircut with your boy, you can go to my website, tangbechopping.com. Book an appointment there. You can, uh, If you want it to be for YouTube, you got to make sure to put that in the comment section. I'm going to try and record it. And that's basically it, YouTube. I appreciate y'all for watching. Until next time, let's go.